My name is Fred Danziger, and I'm having an exhibit here at the Gallery at Ferry Park, right where the Cape May Lewis Ferry comes in. This is in the terminal building, and they're trying to make this a destination for people in the South Jersey area and a very nice gallery here. How long has the gallery been around? We opened in November of 2021. And is Fred the greatest thing since sliced bread? (laughs) You better believe it. (laughs) I think so. Yep. When I heard Fred's show was just 30 miles away from Ocean City, I immediately fueled up my helicopter and choppered down. I asked him for an overview. It's mostly recent work. It reflects my interest in George Bellows, who had such a great range of art from portraits, landscapes, cityscapes. Fred, speaking of cityscapes, your paintings of the Iron City are spectacular. I don't know of any contemporary painter who captures the soul of Pittsburgh the way you do. Well, because I was born there, grew up there, and have such fond memories. Your hometown, you can't get rid of it. So I love the place. One of your great drawings is called The Pittsburgh Girl, and I think I see her in an actual painting as well. Yeah, I saw her walking up one of the really steep hills in Pittsburgh. I did a drawing of her, and I finally decided to put her in this painting, more or less coming home. So she's made the climb to her house. When we grew up, Pittsburgh was still smoggy, but boy, your dawn painting of Pittsburgh, it's just so beautiful. I guess things are better now? Oh yeah, much better. Pittsburgh is actually one of the cleaner cities that I've seen. I'm always impressed when I go back there and how beautiful it is, really. I noticed there are what appears to be Orthodox churches in some of the paintings. Well, I think the ethnic neighborhoods, there are so many people of Orthodox faith that emigrated to Pittsburgh and they brought a lot of their heritage with them. So you see it in the churches, especially. One of the churches I painted here, St. Nicholas, it's called, right on the Allegheny River, is no longer there. It was raised and uh, there's just a vacant lot there now. I bet a parishioner would love to have that. I think it's just beautiful to look at, but I especially like the way there's such a steep hill behind it and the relationship between all the people in those houses above and then the church down below by the river. A really nice symbolic juxtaposition, I think. And of course, the row of pine trees at the very bottom adds nature, so they're (laughs) really beautiful. One of your paintings references Rachel Carson, which brings to mind your love for ecology. Can you talk about that a little bit? I think the love of nature is probably at the root of almost everything I do. They're about light and the relationship between humans and nature. But many of my pure nature pieces are elegies to the beauty of nature. And by celebrating nature in my work, I'm making a statement that this is something that should be valued and preserved and that we need to be good stewards. That's something that's very important in my life. Some of your paintings are like abstract expressionist images of pure organic form. Yeah, I almost think of them like a Jackson Pollock, but meticulously painted. Pollock's Autumn Rhythm, for instance, there's a link between that and what I do with these leaf paintings, I think. You've worked both from direct observation and photography. How do they interact? The one key thing that I have loved about plein air painting is that because I work quite a bit from nature directly, when I get a photograph, I'm recalling the color and the textures from nature much more vividly. Fred, can you talk about the various media that appear in the show? Most of the paintings are water-soluble oil. They invented them about 25 years ago by changing one molecule in the structure of oil paint. They found that they could make them water-soluble. The big value of it to me is that you don't have petroleum solvents in your studio. You clean up with soap and water, and the paint works exactly the same but you don't have that smell of paint thinner in your studio. So it's it's kind of healthy. And painting in plein air, you don't have to worry about spilling turpentine or paint thinner onto the ground. So it's helpful in that way too. But I like to switch to gouache or casein. I can work a lot faster. 
and I don't worry so much about really rendering out the forms and kind of gives me a nice break from the very meticulous work that I do in oil. I have to laugh a bit at Fred's claim of breaking from meticulousness. This large-scale gouache is hardly slapdash. Look how lovingly Fred has rendered each fern leaf, both in light and in shadow. This painting of a sheep shearing was done in casein, a milk-based medium, and Fred has captured tremendous detail. Plus, he told me the backstory. This goes back so far, the relationship between people and sheep. The ancient Macedonians supposedly would take the fleece from their sheep and put them in streams. And then they would go upstream and ride horses around to stir up the silt. The silt would flow over the fleece and little bits of gold would collect in the fleece. And that's where we get the legend, which apparently is based on truth, of the golden fleece. Fred, without being too maudlin about it, you truly are one of the nicest people I've ever known. You've had a long life as an artist. Do you have any tips for somebody who might want to go into it? I mean, it's not all peaches and cream, apparently. Yeah, it's a tough road. And I think if you're lucky enough to find a partner that can help you out and supportive galleries to get your work out into different collections, I've been very lucky with that. I haven't done hundreds and hundreds of paintings that pile up in my studio. I've been able to get so many of them out onto collector's walls, and for that I'm very grateful. You've pursued realism for your entire working career. These are not easy paintings to do. Talk about the commitment that it takes. Yeah, I don't wait for inspiration. I work almost every day. I try to work from nine to nine with breaks in between, but I try to put in a good eight hours. Like any good working person, I think of it like that. It's just the work I do is inspiring to me and the thing that I've always wanted to do since I was a little boy and I'm just very lucky that I've been able to do it. Thanks, Fred, and thank you for your years of friendship. Same here, John. All those many years at the Art Institute. <laughs> Great times together. <laughs> Truth be told, in those days, I often baited Fred into verbal fisticuffs worthy of a George Bellows painting. And yet, Fred repaid my meanness with an amazing gift of art, which a mutual friend has been trying to get his hands on. And can you please explain to Eric that I'm not going to sell my painting that you did of me? <laughs> Eric, John is not giving it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Fred. And for more information about this exciting new art showcase, please contact the amazing Becca Bergen.